today's video, we're going to be making a simple teddy bear. This is a great project for beginning sewers and it's super quick to make so it works really well for service projects. For the body of the bear, you can use cotton, flannel, or fleece. They all work great. If you do choose to use cotton, just take care to make sure that the fabric is opaque enough that you won't see the stuffing through. You're also gonna want some scraps of felt that you'll use for your decoration on your teddy bear, as well as your nose and the snout portion here. You may also want some fleece for decoration as well. And you'll want polyfill in order to stuff your teddy bear. For the eyes, you can use two eight millimeter safety eyes or buttons also work great. And you may also want some embroidery floss for decorative stitching. This bear was made with flannel fabric and a flannel dress and felt was used for the face accessories. This one was made with cotton fabric, felt for the face details, felt for the letters, and then fleece for the sweatshirt. Um, the accessories are a little bit more challenging, but those are optional. It's a really cute bear even without those, but I will show you how to make a sweatshirt, an I love you sweatshirt that the bear can wear, and a little dress. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is place your fabric for the body of the bear right sides together. Then take your pattern piece and lay it on top of your fabric and trace. If you don't want to trace your pattern, you can also use weights and simply cut around. Once your pattern's transferred to your fabric, go ahead and cut around the edge of the bear. The body of the bear is now cut out. Next, take the time to cut out the different pieces for the face of your bear from your felt. So I've cut both the nose and the snout out of felt. You can also cut a heart or any other shape that you'd like to add to the body of the bear. So take one of your body pieces, the one that you would like to be the front of the bear, and lay it right side up. You can position the snout wherever you'd like to on the front of the teddy bear, but if you'd like to be really exact, you can take your pattern piece and you can cut out a window where the snout is positioned. Then you can lay your pattern piece on top of your fabric, position the snout in the window, hold it in place, and remove your pattern. And we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this in place with a very small seam allowance, such as 1 8 of an inch. You do want to make sure that you have coordinating thread in your sewing machine. Since the felt here is white, I wanna make sure I have white thread in my sewing machine so that it matches. So let's head to the sewing machine. Sewing tight curves on the sewing machine can be a bit of a challenge. So if that's not something that you feel up to at this point, it's okay to go ahead and sew this by hand instead if you prefer. The trick when sewing curved shapes like this is to go slow, take your time, and don't be afraid to stop frequently. I'm gonna be sewing with about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance, so pretty small. The next step is very similar. We're gonna be adding the nose to the bear. You can look at the template to see where it should be positioned. You want to center it on your oval about a quarter inch down from the top. This time, we're gonna to switch to black thread when we sew. We're gonna stitch close to the edge just like we did for this piece, except for this time, we're gonna start a little bit below the bottom point of the nose. So when we sew, we're gonna start down here just below, 
go up to the tip of the nose, sew all the way around, come back down to this point, and sew down exactly on our first line. And again, if you don't want to do this on your machine, you can stitch it by hand. When you start sewing, make sure that you've switched to black thread in your sewing machine. Also, make sure that your thread tails are long. That's going to be important for a later step. So we are starting stitching at the bottom of the nose. So I'm going to start about a centimeter below that bottom point. I'm going to start with my needle down and I'm going to hold my thread tails and I'm going to go straight up. And once I'm on the felt, I'm going to go ahead and turn. And now I'm going to stitch around the nose with about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance. Looks like I need to go back one stitch, turn, and stitch down exactly on your previous stitches. Keep your thread tails long. Okay, so we've kept our thread tails long here on purpose. And the reason is so that we can pull them to the back and tie our knot. That way we didn't have to do back stitching, which sometimes can be really visible. So to do this, take a regular hand needle and put it in from the front to the back, right at the bottom of your stitches. Then take the ends of your thread tails and thread the end through the eye of your needle. You can do one at a time or you can do both together. So I've now threaded both my thread tails through the eye of my needle and I'm going to turn it over and pull my thread tails to the back side. Once all my thread tails are on the back side, I'll pull them to each side two and two and then just tie a regular old knot. I like to do this a couple times. Make sure it's nice and strong. And then clip your thread tails. And our nose is now attached to our teddy bear. The next thing we want to do is add the eyes. So as before, when you add the eyes, you can use your pattern piece as a guide if you like. So sometimes what I'll do is I will take a needle or a pin and just put a little hole in my the center of the eye on my pattern piece. And then I'll make sure that my pattern piece is centered on my fabric. And I'll use a fabric friendly marking tool to mark the placement of my eyes. Now it's kind of difficult to see. But there are my two dots for my eye placement. So if you're using buttons for the eyes, you can go ahead and stitch those on. If you're using safety eyes, the first thing you want to do is poke a little hole. So I'm using an awl to very carefully poke a hole through the fabric. If you don't have an awl, you can use um, your seam ripper to do a tiny little cut, or you can use the very point of some sh small sharp scissors. But you want this hole to remain very, very tiny. Um, if you do your hole too big, your eye may fall out. So just make a real small hole. When I use my seam ripper, I'll just trim just a couple threads and then I put the post of the safety eye 
through the opening. And put the back on. And then repeat for the other side. So the eyes of my teddy bear are now attached. Another optional decoration that you can add to your teddy bear is eyebrows. For the eyebrows, I like to sew these by hand using embroidery floss. So I'm going to tie a little knot in one end of my embroidery floss. And the other end, I'm gonna pass through a needle. Since the embroidery floss is so thick, I'm using a little bit wider needle, and so I need a needle threader to help me get this through. And I'm gonna start from the back side. And I like the eyebrows to start about the side of the eye. So if you go on the side of one of the eyes, about a quarter of an inch away, and then I go up and find the center of the eye vertically, about a quarter of an inch up, and then go back down. And you don't want this to be super tight. You don't want it to pull your fabric or distort it. So make sure it's snug enough to lay flat, but not pulling. Then I'm gonna jump over to the other side, same height at the center of the eye, and come out. And then go down, find the same height here, and over. And there are my two eyebrows, and I'm gonna turn it to the back, and I'm gonna tie myself a knot. We've got the basic bear done. You could add any other decoration you want. Adding a heart to the tummy is super cute if that's something you'd like to do. I'm gonna add some more decoration later to mine. Um, I'm gonna give my bear some accessories, so this is all I want now. But if you'd like to add anything else to the bear's body, now's the time to do so. Once you've got this done the way that you would like to, lay your bear piece right side up, grab your second piece and lay it right side down on top of it. Pin in place. Next, we're going to sew around the body of the bear with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you look at your pattern, you can see an example of where the stitch line is. So we'll be stitching all the way around the bear. We do need to leave an opening to turn. I recommend this section right here. You want the place that you leave open to be flat because that will make it easy to slip stitch later. And you also don't want it to be somewhere super noticeable. So this is where I like to leave my opening. So I'm gonna adjust my pin right here leaving my opening and I'm gonna put some double pins so I don't forget that that's where I'm starting and stopping. And when you start and stop, you wanna be careful that you don't stop right here at the underarm. Um, if you do, it's really hard to slip stitch a corner. So always make sure you go a little below so that you can go up straight and then turn and so that the opening is not right up against that corner. So let's head to the sewing machine and sew around with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, clip the curves and corners and take care not to cut your stitches. Mm -hmm. 
don't clip the section that you left open. Clipping really makes a big difference in your final plush. It will help it lay a lot better if you make sure to do that before you turn. Next, let's go ahead and turn the plush right side out. If you like, hemostats can be handy to help you turn if needed. Our bear is all right side out. Once your bear is completely turned, you're ready to stuff. So go ahead and grab your polyfill. The first thing you want to do is fluff your polyfill. This means you're going to tear it into little bitty pieces. The little pieces take shape much better than big hunks of polyfill. The big pieces of polyfill can make your plush look really clumpy and we often don't want that. So take the time to tear it into little pieces and this will help your plush look nicer in the end. And let's start filling. Hemostats are really good for this as well. I like to start by filling the ears and then work my way forward. You can stuff your plush as loose or as full as you want, um, but I found it usually takes a lot more stuffing than I anticipate. So go ahead, take the time, stuff it the way you like it, and then we'll come back. I finished stuffing my bear, but before I close the opening, I'm gonna decide what accessories I'd like to put on my bear. The pattern includes an option for a fleece or felt sweatshirt, which is what I'm going to work on next. I'm going to be making a purple fleece sweatshirt for my teddy bear, so I have my pattern. I'm going to fold my fabric in half, right sides together. And I'm going to trace and then cut it out. Before you cut your fabric, you do want to test it. It should be stretchy this way rather than vertically. So make sure your fleece stretches left to right. I'm gonna take the sweatshirt piece that I want to be the front of the sweatshirt and lay it right side up. And I'm going to look at my pattern piece as a guide and I'm going to place my letters centered on the sweatshirt. And now you can stitch these on by hand or by machine, whichever you prefer. I now have my decoration attached to the front of my sweatshirt and you could add anything you want, which is what makes it really fun. Take your second sweatshirt piece, lay it right side down on top of the first and we're going to stitch as shown on the pattern. So you'll notice that it's just a little bit here at the top end and then a little bit here at the bottom end and there's a space in between, that's for the arms. So I'm gonna use pins to mark where the arms will go. So. Here is where I need to stop, and here, and I'll mark the same on the other side. I'm going to stitch a little on the top, stitch a little on the bottom with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. My sweatshirt's complete and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the bear. Make sure the seam allowances are tucked in and pull the arms through the openings. Position the sweatshirt the way you like it. 
What I find sometimes happens, since the arms are so small, when you put the sweatshirt on, it sometimes causes the stuffing to squish back towards the center of the bear, which makes these look kind of empty. So now that we have the sweatshirt in place, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my stuffing tool and I'm going to refill the arms. So I'm just gonna guide some little pieces of polyfill back to the arms there. And if you need to, you can grab some additional small pieces. But I'm just going to work the polyfill back into place. Both of the arms are now filled. It looks like I need a little bit more polyfill right here. I'm going to finish stuffing and then slip stitch it closed. Before it's all the way closed, add any additional stuffing it may need. To hide your knot at the end, tie your knot, insert the needle back through the seam allowance next to your knot and out through the plush. and clip. I am almost done. The last thing I want to do is add a little flower for my bear. So I've cut a little flower with three petals and I'm gonna put a little button in the center and I'm gonna just gonna stitch that by hand. Once I've got the button secured to the felt, I'm going to put it on my teddy bear and hand stitch. and our teddy bear is now done. I've started work on a second bear and on this one, instead of the sweatshirt, I'm gonna make the dress. The dress pattern is designed to be used with cotton or flannel. So since that fabric frays, seam allowances are worked into the pattern. So let's get started. First, you need two dress skirt pieces and two dress top pieces. If you like, you can add decoration to the top. So grab the dress piece that you would like to be the front top. You can use the pattern piece as a guide to add the heart to the center if you'd like. Or you could add any other decoration that you'd prefer. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and stitch this heart in place. Now that the front of the dress top is done, take the second top piece, lay it right side down on top of the other, and we're gonna stitch the sides just like on the sweatshirt. So from the top to this point, we're gonna sew, and then from here down to the bottom, just along the side edge. So I'm gonna use pins to mark those points. And we're gonna sew from the top to the pins, and then from the pins to the bottom using a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, I'm gonna finish the top curved edge of the dress. So I'm gonna turn it under a quarter of an inch all the way around to get a nice little hem. To give myself a guide mark, I'm gonna use my gauge and I'm going to set my gauge to one half inch and I'm just gonna draw myself a few guide marks at that half inch. This is optional, you don't have to do this step, but I find it helps me to make sure I do an even fold all the way around. So I'm gonna repeat on the other side The 
the first thing I'm going to do is press the side seams open. And since this is so tiny, I'm going to use a sleeve roll to help me. And I'm going to press the seam open. And I'm going to press it all the way from the top down as if I sewed the whole way. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And next, I'm going to take the top edge and I'm going to turn it down to touch my guide marks. So just a quarter, quarter of an inch all the way around that neckline. Okay, I've now pressed all the way around the top so that my dress around the neckline will have a nice finished edge. So I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a couple things. First, I'm gonna sew all the way around the neckline with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or just a smidge bigger. And that will help that lay flat when it's on the bear. The next thing I'm gonna do is stitch around this opening. So I want this seam allowance to stay flat when it's on the bear and I don't want any raw edges to accidentally come loose. So I'm gonna stitch just a rectangle about an eighth of an inch away from that opening. So just all the way around an eighth of an inch and I'm gonna do that on both sides. When you're stitching the armhole, one thing that you can do to help is to put a pin where you start and stop. It will help give you a guide for your rectangle. The top of the dress is done, so let's work on the skirt. Take the two skirt pieces and place them right sides together. So the right sides should be touching. Sew the two short ends with a quarter inch seam allowance. As with the top, we're next gonna do a hem guide. The hem guide for the base is a little bit bigger. We're gonna be sewing a hem with a 3 8 inch fold. And so I'm gonna draw a line that is three-fourths of an inch from the bottom edge. So this is gonna be the bottom of my skirt. I'm gonna overlap my ruler three-fourths of an inch and make myself a guideline. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And now I'm going to Press open the two side seams and then fold the bottom edge to touch my guide mark. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew the hem in place using a seam allowance that's just a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. You can give it another quick press to set your stitches. And now that our hem's in place, we're ready to gather the skirt. So I'm gonna do a gather stitch along the top edge of the skirt. This is the raw edge, the one we haven't sewn yet. To do a gather stitch, set your machine to the longest stitch length. Usually, this is anywhere between four and seven. When gathering, keep your thread tails long and don't backstitch. And I'm gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. Careful not to overlap your stitches. And again, keep your thread tails long. I finished my gather stitch and now I'm ready to attach the skirt to the top. The first thing I want to do is divide the skirt into equal sections. 
the seams, divide the skirt in half. So next, I want to find quarters. So I'm going to fold this in half. I'm going to line up the two seam allowances. And then I'm going to pinch it towards each end. So this side would be one quarter. And again, line up your seam allowances. Pinch to the other end. And this would be a quarter. One, two, three, four equal sections in my skirt. Turn the skirt wrong side out. Turn the dress top right side out. Mark the quarter sections on the top. So we've got half at the sides. I'm going to line up the two sides and then pull out to get the quarters just like we did on our skirt. So this side will be a quarter. And this side will be a quarter. Place the dress top inside the skirt. So I'm just going to slide this in here. So the right side of my skirt is touching the right side of the top. And I'm going to align the side seams. And I'm going to make it so that the raw edges are touching and I'm going to pin in place. I'm going to do the same at the other side seam. Find the two side seams, align them with right sides together. Then take your pins marking the quarter section. So here's a quarter and here's a quarter and align those sections. So this is basically aligning the center front here. And then I no longer need that pin. I'm going to do the same on the back. I'm going to align this quarter section with the back quarter section and pin in place. So when you look at it now, you can see that the skirt is just a little bit bigger than the top. And that's normal. What we're going to do is we're going to gently hold our gather threads and slide the fabric down until it's the same size. So we want the skirt fabric to be the same size as the top fabric. And you want to be really gentle. You want to make sure that you're sliding the fabric, not just pulling the thread. So what I like to do is I like to start on one side and I'll just wrap the thread around my fingers and hold it and slide the fabric down. So hold the thread and slide the fabric. If it stops moving, if it won't move, you can gently pull a little more with your hand and then keep sliding again. And it usually works best if you start sliding from farther away from your grip. Once your skirt is the same size as the top, repeat on the other side. You shouldn't have to gather very much since the skirt is pretty small. And then one thing you can do to hold it in place is you can wrap your gather threads around the pin to secure them. So I'm just going to do like a figure eight around that pin to hold my threads in place. And then what you'll notice happens sometimes uh, when you're pulling your gathers is 
One side will end up all flat and the other side will end up all scrunchy. So try to distribute those as evenly as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try not to have them all in one place if, if you can and add more pins to hold them in position. Okay, so now that my skirt is the same size as my top, I'm ready to go ahead and sew. So I'm gonna head to the sewing machine and I'm gonna attach the skirt to the top with a seam allowance that is just a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch because I don't want to see my gather stitches on the outside. So let's head to the sewing machine. Be sure to set your sewing machine back to the regular stitch length and I like to sew with the top on the outside. So I'm gonna flip it so that the skirt's on the inside and the top's on the outside. That way I can see my gathers when I sew. And I'm gonna go just a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna stitch it in place slowly. And it's okay to adjust your pleats and gathers as you go if needed. Check to make sure that your gathers look nice. And if everything looks okay, go ahead and trim your gathering threads. I want the seam allowance pointing to the top of the dress. And I'm gonna press that in place. If there's anywhere on at the front of your dress where you can see your gathering stitches, go ahead and remove those. You could see mine right at the very front here. So I want to make sure I take care of that. My dress is done and I'm ready to put it on the bear. So slide it over the top. and push the arms through the holes. And there we go. Now you can readjust the stuffing as needed. Slip stitch the opening in your bear closed. I'm gonna add a flower to this bear as well. So I'm going to hand stitch a button to the center of the flower and then I'm going to apply the flower to the bear and I'm just gonna hand stitch this as well and you can place it wherever you like. My bear is finished.